Hello, everyone. This will just be a short video. I'm very thrilled to announce that our X-Band Phased Array Exploration Platform, uh, the Phaser, has officially released this week. We first announced this at a sold-out workshop that we did at last year's IMS. Um, this, this board can be used for education and prototyping of various beamformers and radar systems. And this is something that you can order now. It's available now. Uh, we've got lots of getting started material for it online. So this will just be a quick video to, uh, to introduce this. Uh, so this is what it looks like. It's an eight element receive antenna, and that's a linear array that's built right into the phasers PCB. But you could also bypass that and add your own antenna. And then it's got two channels of transmit. Um, they are switch channels though, not simultaneous. Uh, so this will be great for exploring things like virtual arrays. The frequency of operation is primarily centered around 10 to 10 and a half gigahertz. Uh, and the whole thing is, is open source. Uh, the design is online. There are programming examples and an open source driver for it. Uh, there's, there's presentations and videos, all that kind of stuff uh, online as well. And we'll be adding a lot more collateral to those online pages over the coming months. Uh, the price is about $2,500, and you can order that now on analog.com or DigiKey or Mauser or, or those kinds of sites. And that price might seem a bit high to some uh, and also a bit low to others. Um, we really worked hard to keep the price low, uh, but even so, I realized that it may not be in the budget for the casual hobbyist. In that case, I'd recommend you check out my videos on how to turn the $250 Pluto into a two-channel digital beamformer. But for those in this uh, phased array beamforming industry, uh, we kind of get the opposite comment, which is, how did you get the price so low? Uh, phased arrays just tend to have a lot of expensive stuff in them, and so the prices quickly go up, especially as the element count goes up. So we have a good stock of these in our warehouse now, uh, but let me just say that there's really no way to know how long that stock will last. Uh, we have several companies looking to buy tens of these to train their new college grad engineers, you know, kind of give them hands-on experience with a low-cost uh, phased array board and also several universities looking to buy them to outfit their labs. So uh, it's possible that that stock could disappear quickly. Uh, and with the supply constraints that we have, especially around the Raspberry Pis, it could take a few months to, uh, to rebuild and restock that. Okay, so why are we doing this? I like this quote from Paul Brokaw. Uh, he's a longtime analog devices and IEEE fellow. He says, simulation will answer the question you asked. The lab will answer the question you didn't know to ask. And then I also like this quote uh, from a Google software engineer. He says, first do it, then do it right, then do it better. It's easy to spend a lot of time and thought and simulation thinking about how these arrays might work out. And, and all of that is good. But it's also good to just build something and learn from that. And even if that something isn't exactly what your end product is going to look like, there is so much that a working first iteration will be able to help you with and help you develop software and algorithms for. And so that is our hope of what you could do with the phaser kit. So what does that phaser look like? Here's a side-by-side -side comparison of the block diagram of the phaser RF board. Uh, so first, let's start with the receive antenna. This is an eight element antenna. It's built right into the phaser board. Uh, let me give a shout out to Sean McDivitt at First RF. He was kind enough to design this antenna for us and allow us to make it open source as part of this project. Uh, thank you very much, Sean. Your antenna works great. Uh, that antenna is composed of 32 patches. Each row of four is Wilkinson combined together. So you really have effectively eight elements configured in a linear array. And the 3 dB bandwidth of the antenna is about 9.7 to 10.8 gigahertz. So we try to stay generally in the 10 to 10 and a half gigahertz range. However, you can also bypass that antenna. Uh, you can solder in these little SMP connectors and then run a cable to your own antenna. This also allows you to do different receive arrays, like a two by four or something, or you can do different frequencies. With a minimum of modification, you can easily do frequencies from eight to 14 gigahertz with this board. So continuing from the receive side, our 10 gigahertz signal exits that antenna and then goes into the ADL8107 LNA. So the signal is amplified and then enters one of two ADR1000 beamformer chips. These chips allow each element's gain and phase to be individually set. And that's basically the heart of beamforming this array. So then those phase and gain shifted signals get combined, and then they go through a filter to attenuate the image and LO frequency. And then they are down converted to 2.2 gigahertz with the LTC5548 mixer. This is a great little X-band mixer, and it puts our signal in a range that can now be digitized by the Pluto software fine radio. And, and that Pluto is included in the kit. The LO for all the mixers is generated by the ADF4159. We can output an LO of about 10 to 13 gigahertz. 
That can be routed out of the phaser if you want to look at it or send it to another phaser board, but more commonly it just gets routed to the two receive mixers and the one transmit mixer. The ADF4159 also has an FMCW ramp generator, so we can make all kinds of different chirps and add some fairly high bandwidths too. And we use that for most of the phaser's radar projects. On the transmit side, phaser takes in a 2.2 gigahertz signal from Pluto and upconverts that to 10 gigahertz. Uh, and then there's some filters and an amplifier in there too. And then there are two transmit outputs and they are switched. So this was added in for constructing virtual arrays. So you can have two antennas at two different angles and uh, get some better angular resolution that way. This is, this is an overview of some of the material that we've already put together for Phaser. In the upper left-hand corner, what's called Digitizer is really about the software ecosystem around Phaser and uh, the, the Pluto radio. So how do we program it in Python and MATLAB? And then we have labs on steering angle, how do we point a beam? We have labs on antenna pattern, like what, is, uh, uh, what does the half power bandwidth mean? And, and what's the impact of increasing the number of elements in an array? So you can, you can see that live real time. And then we have labs on various antenna impairments. So these are things like tapering and side lobes. Uh, we talk about beam squint, we talk about grading lobes, we talk about uh, quantization side lobes. We have uh, labs on all those online. Um, and then we do, uh, do a fun lab on monopulse tracking, where we use the, the two beams coming out of phaser from the two different ADAR-1000 ships. We digitize those with the two different receive elements of Pluto, and, uh, and we're able to implement an adaptive tracking routine. And then finally, we have some, uh, some simple radar labs online, FMCW radar, where we can generate a chirp or a series of chirps and receive that reflection back and look at the distance to a target, look at the speed of the target. We can do range Doppler plots. We can do groups of chirps. So we can do 64 or 128 chirps or however many chirps th that you want in a row. And we can capture that in one synchronous buffer of Pluto. Here's a standard configuration for what a radar lab would look like. We hook up one transmitter output of phaser to an X-band antenna, which is also included with this kit and uh, that radiates out. And then we use the receive array to find where that target is. And then we mix that down to the beat frequency. And uh, of course we can do all kinds of interesting processing with that. So here we just have that transmit antenna just pointing back at the array. So this is useful for looking at the array pattern or doing things like monopulse tracking. And phaser is really intended to be a getting started vehicle for larger phased array prototyping. And you can continue that prototyping in the ADI ecosystem, all with exactly the same software. So these very same software that you use on Phaser, all the algorithms and things that you're gonna do, you can scale that up with more real world systems or more real world prototypes for what you're trying to accomplish without having to redo a bunch of software. And so here I show two main vehicles for doing that. One is the X microwave system, uh, which is fantastic. It has a lot of different RF parts in there, including from analog devices. The ADAR-1000 is in there, as well as a lot of our PAs, LNAs, mixers. And so you can, you can completely prototype a phased array system using their blocks, and that gives you a lot of flexibility. Analog devices also sells an X-band developer's kit, and this is much closer to what a real-world final solution would look like. The standard kit is 32 elements controlled by eight ADAR-1000s, so it's a it's a much larger two-dimensional array, and that array is both transmit and receive, so you can do a lot of interesting uh, pulsed radar experiments and prototyping with that. And all three of these platforms are very complementary. The software is the same for all of them. The, the kinds of terminology and the things that you're doing is the same for all of them. So the, the goal is really to allow you to start small with a simpler array like Phaser, kind of learn and experiment with that, and then move on to something that is closer to the prototype or the system that, that you're trying to develop. So that's it. I'll put some links in the description below on where you can find all of this. And um, yeah, let me, let me know what you think about it. Thank you.